So welcome everyone and we are very excited to have you all here today. Uh, my name is Ekaterina Stoops and I am the e-learning faculty development coordinator here at City University of Seattle. So the topic for our workshop today is creating reusable course content. And the reusable course content items are an efficient and very effective way to build courses and create engaging learning experiences for students. So in this workshop, the presenter, Erin Thornberry, will share her strategies. Um, will, she will show how to use and reuse uh, various types of content in Blackboard. So during this workshop, you will have a plenty of opportunities to discuss and share your ideas. And to participate in these discussions, you can use chat and type your questions and comments in chat. But we actually would like to encourage everyone to speak and um, to do that you will need to use your microphones. So, um, but when you're not speaking, please keep your mics uh, muted so that we're not getting any background noise. If you do not have a microphone, you can always call in uh, to this session by clicking on the menu icon up um, at the top, so at the top of your screen you'll see an icon that looks like a menu. So click on that icon and then select uh, use your phone for audio and you will be able to connect to the session via phone. If you have any technical issues during this workshop, uh, please use chat uh, to let us know about the issue you are experiencing or if you lose connectivity and collaborate, which uh, happens unfortunately, uh, just try to um, log in back several times and if that doesn't work, you can always email us at bbsupport at cityu.edu. We are monitoring our emails and we'll help you get back in Collaborate. And now I would like to introduce our presenter, Erin Thornbury. So Erin is the Director of eLearning at City University of Seattle. She oversees the administration of Blackboard and its uh, associated academic technologies for CityU. Erin also advises faculty on best practices in instructional design and learning technologies. Erin has designed and taught educational technology courses for City University and the University of Tennessee. She holds a bachelor's degree in art education from the Pennsylvania State University and a master's in instructional technology from the University of Colorado. And she's currently working on her doctorate in leadership, uh, in learning and leadership at the University of Tennessee. And this is the picture of Erin and her dog, Amber, and her cat, Stella. <laughs> and without further ado, Erin, um, please take it away. So I had to introduce you to my whole family. Um, don't tell my husband that he's not included, but all of my furry friends are there. So um, now you know me intimately, we can say. So thank you all uh, for joining me this evening. Um, I do want this to be uh, as much of a discussion as it can be, although I do have a lot of things to share and show you. So. Um, I will be prompting you to ask questions at different points during the presentation um, to give you an opportunity to uh, share uh, your own experiences as well as any questions you might have about anything that we cover. So the outcomes for this webinar, um, the first one is the benefits of reusable content, although we'll kind of be talking about that towards the end after I show you um, some of the strategies that I'd like to share. Um, I'm going to ask you, you know, what you think some of the benefits might be um, and how you might use uh, what I've shared in your courses if you're not already. Many of you are probably using some of these strategies already. Uh, but we're going to talk about three different strategies, basically, um, and uh, one of them is the content system, which is relatively new for CityU, and so that's one that one thing that I wanted to highlight and show everybody. Um, but also, um, two other strategies that you can use based on the type of content, the type of reusable content that you're working with, and then talk about what the best practices are, um, where you should put what kinds of content, um, and how to reuse it. 
So to get us started, I want to make sure that we all kind of understand what, what we're talking about when we say reusable content. So what is to you, maybe um, you know the formal definition of reusable content, but if you could take a guess, uh, what would you say uh, reusable content is? A video. A video mm -hmm. could definitely be a piece of reusable content. Of me giving a presentation to the class about a problem. Presentations, mm -hmm. be it uh, the PowerPoint or a recording of your presentation. Anything else? Yes. <laughs> Reusable content has to do with <clears throat> uh, putting uh, problems into the, into the content, into the web, so that can be used to explain various problems in the courses that yes. teach. Definitely. Um, you've, you've hit on one of the things that I definitely want to talk about. Uh, Reusable content, we're, we're, we're talking mostly here about digital uh, learning objects. Uh, but there are things that are adaptable. So when Mark was talking about um, problems that you can reuse to um, teach a particular topic or a particular issue maybe that students frequently uh, struggle with, reusable content is typically very flexible and adaptable to different situations. Um, I like to say, is it easier to uh, recreate that item, that, that learning object, or is it, would it be better to kind of start with something or reuse something? Um, they are also typically, when I, when I say self-contained, I mean that they're not necessarily reliant on the information that came before or information that's coming after, um, or even uh, necessarily um, certain tools that you might use within your courses. And they definitely vary in size. So everything from uh, Mark's example of a video to a full module on a particular topic um, that ha might have um, relevance to multiple courses that you teach. Or you might be teaching the same course um, multiple times. And therefore, you can reuse that that module over and over again. You can almost think of our courses, our, our master shells, as rather large reusable content uh, re or reusable learning objects. So now that we, does everybody kind of understand what I mean? Are we, are we kind of on the same page now? You can maybe give me a, a thumbs up or... Um, yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> yes, all good. Great. Mark, did you have a question? Oh, I just said thumbs up. Oh, great. Thanks. Um, so what are some examples, now that we kind of know what we're talking about, what are some examples that you are already using in your classes? Assignments, discussion board, things like that. I reuse them over and over again. I teach the same class uh, a few times a year. Okay, so again, if you're teaching the same class over and over again, uh, we're often reusing same discussion questions, same assignments, um, uh, same resources often, um, text and things like that. Anything you know, else I, that you can think I of? Us, I usually uh, tweak it. I think almost every class I tweak the, uh, the assignments, I tweak the discussion boards. I, I improve them, I think about what's going on with this class, I keep the the general discussion board or the general assignment the same, but every now and again I like to tweak it just a little bit. Yes, and that's actually a, a great point that I'm going to make later in the class is one of the, the, the class, this, this webinar, uh, one of the benefits of using uh, reusable content and, and saving it in the ways that we'll discuss is that you can continue to tweak and refine what you do um, right. and uh, you're working from one central location as opposed to, oh gosh, what did I do last term? Oh, I did this thing last year that really worked. Um, you're kind of always pulling from the same place. So all of those tweaks and those um, 
additions that you made or refinements that you made are reflected in those in, in the object that you're working with. Aaron, one of the things that I've used to workbook where I've had problems and I mm -hmm. can put a particular problem and I can show it every quarter. Yes, definitely. A workbook is, is another great example, for sure. So uh, I also I actually, I've included... Sorry? Is that Nicole? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say I do little, sometimes mini presentations on a particular topic or uh, the syllabus is beginning to be kind of your voice. Okay, Nicole, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's your connection or if it's your microphone. You might try calling in. I did hear... I'm hearing kind of bits and pieces of it. I heard... Uh, sorry? Oh, no, I was trying to make it better. Yeah, I was having trouble getting my computer to work, so I'm actually on my uh, cell phone, which is, I think, the problem. Oh, you sound perfectly clear now, though, so I don't, I don't know what that was, but it, okay. it was a little, it was, okay. it was breaking up a little bit there. Um, okay, but I think no, I, I heard you say something about... Mini... Go ahead. Oh, I said mini video presentation. So, like a concept, and you know, maybe I'll use a PowerPoint and voice over a PowerPoint, or uh, even just going over the syllabus in video with voice, or you know, saving it as a video um, with voice, so that they just get a little bit more personalization. Yeah, I think that that's a, another excellent example. Um, I've pulled out just a couple of ideas, which will kind of follow through this presentation, so you can more easily follow along with some of the descriptions and, and practices that I'm talking about, but and something that we can all kind of uh, relate to. Your instructor information, that little bio that you have in each of your classes that has a picture of yourself, um, it provides a little bio, your office hours, and it might subtly change depending on the course that you're teaching or your, your schedule that particular term. Um, but it is within in itself a, a little piece of reusable content that you can um, save. And we're, we're going to talk about where the best place is to save that um, and reuse it and tweak it um, in, in all of your classes. Uh, instructor policies. So we have university policies. We have program policies. Um, you probably have some of your own policies in your classes. Um, maybe you have a particular participation policy or um, a netiquette policy. Those are things that you can use in all of your classes, regardless of what the topic is, um, of the term that it's being taught. Uh, an icebreaker. Lots of us use icebreakers early in the course to help students uh, get to know each other and to help build community within those courses. And icebreakers are one of those things that can go really well or they can fall terribly flat. Um, so if you come on to an icebreaker that works really well, that might be something that you save and you reuse in other classes or you refine it, um, as Steve was saying, and, and reuse it in other classes. And then uh, the last example is sort of a group assignment framework. So group work is always challenging. And every time we do it, we learn a little bit something about what we maybe should have done differently, um, instructions that we should have provided or feedback that we should have given. Um, that's all stuff that you can save um, and build out a really robust framework for your students um, so you're supporting them in their, in their group work assignments. Just as some examples of more, um, maybe even more flexible or adaptable uh, content that you might be building and not even realize that you're building. I did want to take a moment and just mention um, OER, or Open Educational Resources. 
Um, many of you are probably familiar with this. So this is a really uh, frequently used term, at least in um, online learning, e-learning, uh, instructional design. Um, not only are you all creating content, but there are organizations that are creating content. And many organizations that are actually creating or housing content that is freely accessible, openly licensed, uh, so that you can use it in the courses that you teach. Uh, there is a great resource called the OER Commons, uh, which have really uh, a wide array. It's great for K through 12 in particular, but they have a wide array of reusable content. Um, those open educational resources, be it uh, a worksheet all the way to a full course that you might utilize. Uh, museums, such as the Smithsonian, are also great resources for um, images, narratives, video, um, history and science uh, information and, and objects that you can reuse. So, uh, you know, when you're thinking about adding content to your courses or your students are struggling with a particular topic and you're getting ready to, to build something to help them, maybe take a moment and see, has, has somebody else already done it? And uh, you have a, a good place to start in developing um, more robust content. The Library of are Congress, you, too. If nobody's in there, that's a, a really great resource. Go ahead, Steve. Erin, are you going to show us how to access open educational resources? Uh, I'm actually not going to talk very much about uh, OER. Uh, I would just simply do a quick Google search. And then okay. um, if you okay. do have specific questions, feel free to follow up with me. I would be happy to okay. chat about it. OK, that'll be fine. Good. Thanks. Thanks. So okay. uh, methods. I mentioned yep. early on that I was going to talk about uh, three different methods for storing and managing your own uh, content within Blackboard. And to do so, I'm going to kind of frame it around the types of content that you have. Um, we have files, we have media, and we have uh, more kind of robust learning objects that might utilize files and media, um, as well as uh, kind of your, your, your context and your text that goes along with it. So um, as an example, files might be a policy that you use in your class, media, your instructor, SIA. You might actually, um, Nicole was mentioning, this might be something that you record uh, and you reuse in your classes. Um, and then uh, learning objects. So thing, combinations of all of these things, such as that icebreaker activity that we were talking about. Aaron? Yes? Is that Aaron. Mark? Did you have a question? Yeah, well, I have a comment. I think yeah. YouTube is a wonderful place for people get stuff. Oh, <laughs> definitely. YouTube is a very common and a very uh, great resource, a really great resource for um, reusable content. The only problem with YouTube is that it is not your content. So uh, if it goes away, you lose that content, right? Um, so you have to be willing to take a little bit of a risk when you're using some YouTube content. Well, I have so those files, stuff. as I was mentioning, we have those different content types, your files, your media, and your learning objects. They align to three different strategies that I'm going to share with you within Blackboard. So your files, I'm going to recommend that you save them in my content, and we'll talk about why I, I think that's a best practice in a second, and I'm going to show you how to do it too. Uh, media, I'm going to recommend Kaltura. Hopefully, uh, many of you are already familiar with Kaltura from some of our other webinars uh, and resources that we've emailed out. And then uh, your learning objects, I'm going to recommend your My Workspace. And I'm hoping that most of you are also utilizing your My Workspace to its fullest. So from here, if there aren't any questions, I just want to take a moment does anybody have any questions or comments before I launch into the Blackboard demo? No. No? Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask uh, the facilitators if uh, you do see a question 
in the chat if you could let me know during the during the demo it seems like most of us have microphones if you are not using a microphone and you have a question during the demo please do use the chat uh, function here in collaborate and one of the facilitators uh, will make sure that I hear your question because I'm not going to be able to see it when I share my screen okay All right. Can everybody see the Blackboard dashboard? Yes. Yes. Great. Yes. So the first, the first um, strategy that I was going to talk about was that strategy for managing your files. So uh, these are straight documents. Um, maybe they're PowerPoints. Uh, maybe they're PDFs or their Word documents or their image files. Um, I'm going to recommend that you utilize content collection for those files. So when you log into Blackboard, you should see two links at the top of your uh, dashboard, one for your courses and one for content collection. And content collection, as I mentioned, is a new uh, is my content is a relatively new tool uh, for us here at CityU and Blackboard. And it is, at its most basic level, just a document repository. Just like your hard drive on your computer, or maybe you're using a H drive or something like that at work, it is just a place for you to drag and drop files. Um, maybe not necessarily drag and drop them, but upload your files um, and organize them into folders to help you uh, quickly access those documents that you want. Um, and you might be asking, well, why wouldn't I just save that on my computer um, or save it in uh, a Google Drive somewhere? Um, one of the benefits uh, to using content collection is, one, you have all of your CityU course-related uh, documents in one place that's going to follow you everywhere. So you could log in at any library and you'd have access to these files. Um, and they're, you know, specific to your teaching uh, here at CityU. Another, another benefit is that you can add these files to any of the courses that you're teaching and you can overwrite them in one location. So this is a, key, a team contract document. Uh, maybe I notice at, you know, a very simple thing. I've done this terrible type, I'm the typo queen, I'll just say. I always have typos in my documents, unfortunately. And um, I always notice them after I share them with everyone. So um, one of the things that you can do here with content collection is you can overwrite those files. So if I have this file in the five sections of MBA 15 that I'm teaching, I can come here and I can overwrite that file and it will update in all of those sections that I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice benefit. Uh, another thing that's great about content collection is I can see, so maybe I've been using this document for a long time um, in several courses or maybe even uh, organization shells or comm shells, uh, I'm not really sure where I put it. So I can use this 360 view to, and there's a lot of information on this page, but if I scroll down to where it says links, I can see all of the courses that I have added this document to. Okay. So, um, it's just a nice overview of where you are using particular types of content. You can see that I'm only using this currently in my workspace shell um, for this demo, but I might, you know, if I was teaching a, an MBA course that's taught all over the world, I might have 10, 20 shells listed here. Um, and so I can see when I go to make that overwrite update, how many places it's going to be impacted or how many courses are going to be impacted. Because just because I overwrite the file doesn't mean my students actually know that I made a change. And maybe I want them to know that change, or maybe it is that typo and I don't necessarily want them to know that I made a change. 
So in my uh, content, I, I don't have very much here yet. Um, like I said, this is a relatively uh, new tool, but I've set up one folder for my images and that's really easy. You just click create folder and give it a name and then you can start adding files there. And then I've uploaded uh, some documents that you can see here, two team contract examples and then a communication policy that I might use in some of my classes. And that's simply by uploading, upload files. I can also Aaron, easily delete question. these files. I'm sorry, is there a question? Yes, I've got a question. D does the course manager, can the course manager see the content collection? Does anyone else see my personal content collection? Uh, no. No, okay, this so is it just is just your content. Just mine. It's specific okay, to, thank you. Yeah, to your account. That's a good thank question. You. Um, I can also delete, so if I've decided I, I you know, don't need something, I can recycle this file, and then once it's moved to the recycle bin, I can delete it from there. So deleting something is a two-step process. Was there a question? I heard a little chat bubble. There's a yeah, comment. Oh, no, sorry. A uh, comment. Th there is a comment from Michelle. They see your content if you share content in a course, though. So sure. she. Sure, and, and that's fine. Yes, that's that's fine. No problem with that. Yeah. So we have all this great content and content collection. Let me show you how how you actually use it in your courses now. And some of you. Um, once I show you, you'll probably be like, oh, I, I wondered what that was for. Um, or maybe you've even used it before. So in a course, and I'm going to go to my workspace course. And in any of the content areas, we'll just say that I want to add something here to my course information. And under build content, I'll just add an item. When you go, oops, let's slow down really quick. When you go to attachments, you have these two options. Browse your computer. You have a document sitting on your computer. That's the one you probably use the most often. And then browse content collection. Oh, okay. When I select browse content collection, it is going to pull up the course content. So any file that's in this course. However, if I want to go to my content, I go to browse, select my content, and I see all of those files that I was just showing you in my content. And I can check mark them. If you click on the name of the file, it's going to open up the file for you to view. Uh, you want to check beside it in order to add it to a course. So you would check the file, click submit, and it's attached that document to this course, or to this item in this course. Any questions about my content? Uh, yes. I've had to teach myself to wait a little bit longer and collaborate before moving on because some people are typing questions and other people have uh, their microphones. So I do like to get a little bit extra time. You kind of have to be comfortable in the silence uh, until you think you're ready to move on. Did I hear Mark? I have a, I have a question. Yes. This is Ron. Hi, Ron. My question is, um, how do you then share that with students? Or is that a completely unrelated? I'm a new faculty, so I'm a bit of a newbie here. Oh, that's fine. Let me uh, go through the, the entire thing then. So here I've attached that file. We browse the my content. I've attached the file to this item. I'll uh, give this item a name. Just call it uh, test content. Collection. Uh, click submit. And 
that new item is going to be at the bottom of my whoops my mouse is jumping around it's going to be at the bottom of my page uh, so this is the item that I added and there's that file and that's how the student would see it so they're going to see it within the course they're only ever going to see the files from my content that you share with them in the course via adding it to a content item or attaching it somewhere does that make sense yeah yeah how how will i know that students can then see it how will i know if it if it's if it's on this page they can see it um the things that they can't see so the other thing that you could do real quickly is i uh, you can turn do you see this edit mode in the corner you can turn that off which means i'm not going to be able to make any changes to this course while that's off but this is going to show me what can my students see on this page and they when can see off. all of these items including that attachment when edit is off when edit is off well no they can see it even when edit is on but turning edit off lets me know that that it's available to them and they can see it because it kind of shows me the student view of sorts. Great. Okay. Good questions. So uh, if there aren't any other questions about content collection, and I see we have about 10 more minutes to go, uh, I do want to show you Kaltura. So I'm back on the Blackboard homepage. And if I scroll down, and I'm a faculty member at City U, so this is not something that our students see, I should see this My Media module on my dashboard. And if I click on the link My Media, that's going to take me to My Kaltura My Media Library. So these are all the videos that I have uploaded, videos, images, uh, presentations that I've uploaded to Kaltura. So this is my library. I can um, add a new video here. So if I have a video that I want to upload, I can um, upload that video. I can create content here too. So I could do a webcam recording um, and I could these other, you could do a video presentation, you can do a video quiz. The screen recording is not going to work if you're using the brow browsers that we recommend. So if you want to do a screen recording, we recommend that you use Capture Space. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time in how you actually use Kaltura uh, because we did already have a webinar about that. And if you do have questions, please feel free to uh, email bbsupport at cityu.edu and that email address is on my last slide, so you don't need to write it down real quickly if you don't already have it. Uh, we would be happy to spend more time with you about how to actually use Kaltura. And we also have some resources uh, that we can share with you about that. Um, but my focus is really, so you have media files, you have videos. Nicole was talking about the videos that she's creating. Um, this is a venue for you to save those videos in Blackboard. Again, it's available anywhere you are so you don't um, necessarily need to have access to your personal computer and it doesn't require you to create an account so YouTube is going to require you to create an account if you want your students to create video and share it with you on YouTube they have to create an account and um, we can have private videos on YouTube but Kaltura is actually password protected the only people who can see this content are city users and um, and only if you share it with them in your course so those are some of the key benefits of using Kaltura over one of the external sites now that doesn't mean that you can't use YouTube or Vimeo or those other um, applications that you might like they might be easier for, to, for you to use and that's totally fine uh, but I just wanted to make everyone aware of the fact that Kaltura is here and it allows you to quickly create and manage your uh, video content and add it to courses that you are teaching in uh, at, here at CityU and Blackboard. Was there a question? Um, yeah, Aaron, yes, I have a really Nicole. quick question. The Kaltura webinar, is that something we can still access through the 
Uh, that uh, webinar is actually posted on the faculty development blog um, and because you attended you, you should get uh, actually an email that I sent out yesterday I think had a link to the faculty development blog it's on the e or the faculty development site in SharePoint um, so that is available and if you can't find it just let us know and we can send you the link yeah so you've created content in Kaltura and you're ready to share it. So let me show you real quickly how to share uh, Kaltura content in your courses. So same deal, I'm going to go to course information. I'm going to make sure my edit mode is on so that I can add content. Go to build content item. And wherever you have this text box, this content editor within Blackboard, so discussion boards, um, providing feedback to students in the Grade Center, here creating content, you can access Kaltura and you can add your media. So you want to look for this mashup button, the tool at, at the very bottom, and select Kaltura Media. Here again are all of those media files, that library that I was just showing you. I can select any of the videos that I want to add, and it added it to that item. Um, I would again give it a title and I would click Submit. Are there? I'm hearing lots of uh, uh, bubbles. Are there lots of questions? Uh Erin, it's 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 C. Katrina. It's me. I'm texting, um, sharing the links to faculty development blog. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh no, that's fine. Great. So um, I've added that video. Um, I will give us another test. Altura title. Uh, click submit. And I can add context around that video. Right? I don't ever want to just post a video for students. I want to provide them with a little context as to what to do with the video, what they should be looking for, but just to show you how easy it is, uh, there is that video and when I click on it, it's going to pop up and start playing. So. Great, that's that's terrific, Erin. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really great tool. Are there any questions about Kaltura? I have one more thing I want to show you before we, we jump back into the presentation and wrap things up. I have a question. Can the students actually create their own videos too and upload them? Do they have that same thing on theirs? They, so they don't have it on the Blackboard dashboard where you saw that module with My Media, but they do have it in discussion boards and wherever that content editor appears. So for them, it's discussion boards, uh, posting an assignment if they, if they wanted to, uh, blogs, journals, they'll have that My Media access and they can record uh, video from there as well and, and share it with the class. Any other questions? There's that, there's that glorious silence. <laughs> all right. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to show you uh, was just to pull all of these uh, tools together. So I'm in my, my workspace. You all should have your own My Workspace shells. These are um, sandboxes, if you will, for you to save content, play with tools, experiment with uh, experiment with different tools. Um, you have access to all of the tools that you ha would have in any of your Blackboard courses. So it's a great place to just sort of get really comfortable and familiar, but then also start crafting some content for the classes that you're teaching. You're teaching. So as an example, I have in uh, course modules created uh, just a really simple item to try to pull some of the things that I was showing you today um, into one learning object that I can reuse in lots of classes. So it's a 
a brief little item um, about getting started with groups in my classes. So it kind of frames why we do group work, um, how much group work they're going to need to do in the class. So this, this text gives some background. This image is coming from content collection. Uh, this video is the one that I was just showing you. So it's from Kaltura. And then this team, team contract, we saw it also in my content and it was the file that was linked in this course. So I'm pulling everything together and this is an item that I can post in any of the classes that I'm teaching. So if I hover over this little arrow and select copy, I can then uh, select the course I want to move it to from the drop-down menu and browse where in that course I would like that item to be posted. Now, it's not necessarily linked to this course, so if I come back to my, my workspace and I'm like, wow, students just, they, they really didn't get it that time, uh, I needed to include this additional information. And so I'm going to modify this item uh, to make it based on what I learned from my, ex my experience using it in my class. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tweak it a little bit. It's not going to update in the classes that I'm teaching unless, of course, it's something that I update in this team contract. Uh, but it is, again, something that, you know, it isn't after I use it in a class. I'm not ne necessarily going to update it in that class because they've already kind of used it, given me feedback on it. But it is something that I can use in future classes. I've, I've taken that information and I've approved, improved upon it. And so I can continue to work on these, you know, uh, little learning objects in my my workspace and, and really refine them and make them um, powerful things to use in my class and share them. I can share them with my colleagues, which is also great. Um, Aaron, there uh, yeah, there was a question. Yeah. Mark has a question. Yes. Aaron, where in your Blackboard is my content? So my Go content ahead. is right up here. So it's under content collection. And when I'm in content collection, I'm looking at my content, my content. OK. OK. OK, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to jump back over to our slides because I know we are running out of time. Thank you all for your uh, patience. So real quickly, I hope, uh, I, I hope each of you have um, learned something new um, or maybe a new approach to something that you're already doing from this uh, webinar. What what do you think are some of the benefits? What are what are some of the things you're going to take away from today? You're going to build the content of the class so that you've got all kinds of information that's easily accessible for your class presentation. That I won't have to keep things on my thumb drive and then forget my thumb drive and be out of luck. Yes. Yes, uh, I can't tell you how many thumb drives and sunglasses I've gone through. Those two things. I just leave them everywhere. <laughs> well, I know that I can actually probably pay Google less for my Google Drive space. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a benefit. There are currently uh, no limitations to any of these tools that I've shown you. So um, you can save lots of stuff there. Well, it's a lot easier if you're using Blackboard to store it, to keep it put into a classroom. It's a lot easier than like even a video you've got on YouTube and you see the link and da, da, da. This is just so much more with all of it sitting there in Blackboard. It's so much easier to get things into your classroom and out. Great. Yeah, and it's also nice sometimes to have that separation, right, between your personal and your work or even just your teaching work um, to keep those things separated and, and keep those files really kind of clean and easy to, to get through and organize. So, well, great, great idea. Because you've got all the Blackboard security going behind it, too, whereas, um, you know, depending on what you're using for file storage, it might be a lot less secure. If you lose your thumb drive, you'll in public. <laughs> whereas, right. Blackboard yeah, definitely. Good point. 
Yes. So um, it sounds like, you know, most of you already have great ideas for this, you know, how you're going to use my content, how you're going to use uh, Kaltura in your, uh, near my workspace, hopefully, going forward. Uh, please do follow up with uh, my team. Actually, this is our, our email address if you want to reach any of the wonderful ladies that I work with. Uh, they are full of knowledge and um, really eager to help faculty out. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us. If you'd like to reach out to me in particular, um, my email address is ethornberry at cityu.edu, and you can reach me at extension 4811. Um, I'll, I think I'll let Ekaterina wrap up, and then if anybody has any questions, you can stay on the line, and I would be happy to answer them um, after she does her little wrap up, because I'm already holding us over time. Uh, Ekaterina? This has been great. Uh, yes, Erin, thank you. It was a great presentation. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I have just a couple of very quick announcements. Um, I would like to let you know that I will be sending out an evaluation form tomorrow. And our evaluation form is very short and it is anonymous. It has just a few questions and it will take you literally two minutes to respond. Um, one of the questions uh, in the form is uh, your suggestions for the topics for upcoming webinars for the next year. So as you all know, we started this CSI uh, webinars, and CSI stands for Connect, Share, and Inspire in September, and they are very popular every time we have many, many uh, faculty participating. So we will continue with this tradition next year. So we are looking for ideas for the topics. Also, if you would like to present next year for one of the webinars, if you have a topic in mind, please email me directly or email um, to bbsupport.cdu.edu with your ideas and I will connect with you and we'll chat and we will put something together for the next year. So um, also I am um, finalizing the schedule for the webinars for uh, the spring quarter for the next quarter. So in spring we will have three topics um, and I am finalizing the schedule now so stay tuned for that email that I will send very very soon so we'll have the topics the dates and the registration links so just a teaser one of the webinars that we're planning for the next uh, quarter is how to use gradebook so we received many re requests from faculty on um, that topic and we will be having a webinar and it will be in April. So, and also a very quick reminder about the upcoming faculty development conference. I'm sure that you have already registered for the conference. Uh, the registration was closed on March 14th, so that was the last day to register. Um, so I hope that you have registered for the conference and it is March 28th, as you I'm sure no. So we will have 21 presentations um, and uh, we will have some presentations offered virtually, not all, but some. So if you registered for the virtual track, you will be able to um, attend um, uh, virtual presentations at the conference. And if you registered, then you will be participating, we will be attending in person, we'll have dinner and a wine reception at the end, so it will be fun. So I will see you there. And thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, and that is all for today and have a great rest of the day. Bye. <laughs>